see if we can find some fish. Yep. So I've just casted the swing ball, literally first cast of the day, standard no net ready. First fish in the bag. No monster, but as you can see, <laughs> absolutely annihilated the swing ball. These layers are absolutely deadly. I mean, I'll go into, I'll go into a bit later on how I rig them and how I've been using them, but just goes to show how deadly these new floating creature baits are from Fox. Lovely little fish to start with. Once we get a few more bigger than this for the camera today. So again, literally just put that fish back, cast out again, second fish, straight up, two cast, two fish. No monsters, but Definitely welcome. And again, as you can see, absolutely. And I laid the little swing bolt. We so get this one straight back, and it's obvious the fish are feeding. I mean, this time of day, when it's like this, before the sun gets up, they're going to go on the main feed. In the boil. So we're still fishing on the swing ball at the moment. Because <laughs> as you can see, <laughs> they still really, really want it. You know, the, the, the fish are hitting so hard today. So which way that's gone in? It's one of them things, why change if it's working? You know, again, you know, beautiful little examples of the river perch. Get this one back. So I've literally just made the first cast. I've just switched over to a nine centimetre, the larger version of the UV floating creature baits. I mean, I mean it's just my personal opinion, but I'm a big believer in big lures for big fish. I mean, I mean, I've caught you know nice fish on smaller lures, but whether it's just a confidence thing for me or what, I just especially when it's coloured water. I think the bigger the target, there's more of a there's more of a shadow there, more vibration. It definitely helps up in your lure size when it's when it's like this. If you want to sort of target the big the bigger fish that could be lurking out there. I'm just I've rigged it on a Texas style at the moment. However, I've just sort of missed one then, but you know, it's not a big believe if you can get away with your hook exposed, expose it. Um, but I know when I move further down, it is the weed still is quite heavy around this area further down. So that's where Texas fishing comes in a bit more. You can drop it and fish it amongst the roots of the reeds where they're going to be hiding. And if you, do, you don't really get snagged, I mean, you might get caught up in it, but you're not going to lose your rig. You just pull it straight through because there's no hook exposed. So that's one of the benefits of, of fishing it on a weedless rig. But I'll keep persevering around here with this. Then we might move further down or change the rig over to a to a jig. So lately I've been having great success with the, the floating creature baits. I mean the main key feature is is in the name, they float. 
you know, the really strong, durable, elastic material. Um, so when it's fished on the Texas rig, it's literally just stood up like that. So it's, it's a lot more visual and it puts a lot of movement in naturally for you, especially in a river, because it'll sort of just flitter and flutter in the, in the current. So when fishing like this, I'm just letting it arc around. I'm actually getting the fish are doing, uh, the, sorry, the lure's doing a lot of the work for me without me doing too much. But yeah, so I've been using it quite a lot recently. Just a quick couple of hours after work on the nights, that's all I can be fitting in at the moment. But I'm having huge success on them. I've had a really nice fish. I've had a hit a good fish other week. Um, and I had a, a really nice fish. The other night um, on the swing ball, which is why I started on that today. But we shall we'll keep topping top, and changing. And I might drop down the creature size at the moment because at the moment I've got the nine centimetre on. And it's just with it being a bigger profile, it's catching the current and just not it's just not keeping it hard down the bottom enough. Unless I up the weight. <sighs> See the nipping eye, there's a lot of smaller fish out there. I might just drop it down to a seven centimetre and see if that makes a difference. I might just feel a bit more confident of taking it and put a few more fish on the bank. As you can probably see, I'm just fishing in front of a, an outlet for a water treatment centre now obviously naturally this water's going to be a lot warmer than the natural water that's in the river so these these areas are prime areas for holding bait fish not only the water's warmer but there's a lot of particles coming through which the bait fish feed on and obviously with perch being a predator they're going to follow the bait fish so if you generally fish around these areas you have to be on top of them but if you fish around if you fish around them um, you know, the, the, the chances are it's, it's going to hold pike or perch or, you know, other chub. But I'm literally, I'm not doing that much movement with the lure at the moment. The, what I'm fishing is a tidal stretch, which at the moment the tide's pushing in, so it's counterbalancing the current. So it's actually pushing upstream now. I'm literally casting out, letting it drop down and just letting it come round on an arc. It's important to keep in contact though. Keep your line tight. Just keep that, keep winding that bow out. Don't let it out too far. Even though you are on braid, the chances are you might just not set the hook properly. So just keep it tight. I'm not saying this, this works every time, but this morning it's, it's certainly been effective so far. Take a little bite then. And the water's quite coloured. I say it's, well, it's, it's, it's up by about a metre from what it was last week. Which, you know, people always think, oh, it's coloured, it might not fish well, but sometimes it could be the complete opposite. And that bit of extra coloured water comes in. Plus they feel more confident feeding, feeding in, in bright conditions like today. But also, the prey fish can't see them coming as easy. So it's a win-win for the perch, really. So we'll just keep working this area. And if we don't get any more fish from here, then we'll just move further up. And just keep, just keep leaping up the river. That's the main thing, just, 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 keep, just keep mobile. There you go, just like that. Just letting it arc round. No crazy movements. I mean, it's only a small fish, this one, so you can swing this one in. There'll be no harm. That's it, up and mount. Lovely little perch and great fun. Let's get that one straight back.
Well, that's it. That's that quick session wrapped up. Just a few hours, but hopefully from the video you see what is achievable and, and learnt a few tips and tricks along the way. So if you get you know a little short window of time to go out after work or before work, you can use some of them and hope to put a few more fish on the bank. That's me done now. I'm going to go back and get some errands done.